Hello everybody, I hope that you are very well and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be going over the Bitcoin chart, my views on this chart, some really important levels and uh, just to say yeah, it's nice to be back. Um, so obviously yeah, I've, I've gone through some things recently, obviously now I've got my dad's funeral out of the way, uh, all of that stuff that was going on in my personal life I feel as if um, I've taken obviously some time off being a, I can't even remember the last time I made a Bitcoin analysis must have been over a few weeks ago and um, yeah I'm, I'm back now I'm trading and uh, it's it's nice so uh, with that said let's get into the charts what I'm good at and yeah it's nice to continue so let's begin by taking a look at Bitcoin 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 um, what I am doing at the moment, the way I am trading this, is swing trading only. Okay, so by swing trading, I'm just taking what I refer to as the most high probability setups. Obviously, it doesn't mean there's a 100% win rate, but it does mean you have good probabilities when you're looking at these trades, when you're looking at these levels. And obviously, that means you take one trade a day, sometimes uh, one trade every few days. Okay, uh, it's not like I'm in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm, I'm trying to do it very slow paced, gradually <laughs> getting my way back into trading. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll up it more. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that on Monday uh, next week is when I'll start scope trading again. But for now, I'm more than happy with just swing trading this, taking one trade, maybe even one trade a week, but one trade every few days, um, getting back into the swing of things. So that's what I'm currently doing, uh, swing trading Bitcoin. So what have we got? Some levels here on the swing trades. I want to keep this this video fairly simple. Okay, I'm going to go over some simple uh, analysis, but nevertheless effective, but definitely more simple. Okay, so let's start off here. Obviously, we put in our high back on the 17th of August, which was twelve thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, from twelve thousand five hundred dollars, we obviously broke back into what was old resistance. Originally tried to act as support, which was your weekly, but obviously then that level was lost and back tested. Okay, and this is from twelve k. Obviously, once you have a support level that is then lost and back tested like this, then it's obviously, you know, flips into resistance. If a support does not act as support, once you've lost the level, it then flips into resistance. Really important to remember that. So obviously, that's what happened here. You had the back test. You move down to this crucial level of 11,531, which is the weekly. OK, you can see how you had a bounce there. OK, you put in another lower high. You had a move back down off that level for your lower low. You put in another lower high, which is the point of control of the whole range. And then you obviously move back down here, which was actually the value area low. Let me add this in for you. Oh, this was the value area low of the whole range. And let me hide this. So this is what we're looking at in terms of volume. You have your volume, you have your volume value area low, value area high, and point of control. POC is point of control where the most volume is transacted. As you can see, a very crucial SR level. And you can see where the bounce was off of the value area low. And obviously, value area high in the past, you know, that's where the, you, know, you had a quite a lot of volume build up. I'm using 68% uh, on my value areas. And you can see here that it's, it's acted as brilliant support resistance levels. So that's why you bounced off of this level. Because, you know, you have to remember in trading, there's always a reason why. You don't ever get random pivots. So that was the reason why you bounced off of that low. Okay, value area low of the whole range that we've got going on here. Okay, so I'll hide that again. And I will go back into a high time frame levels. As you can see, I've got my eye on quite a few uh, harmonics here. I'm actually trading off of harmonics at the moment. But it's a little bit more advanced. I want to keep this more simple here. So what do we have? We have, obviously, our value area low point of control resistance value area low support obviously value area high is, is a resistance but it's quite far away now we're going low low lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low potentially your lower high okay so from here i think you've got two big pivots okay that is the pivot at eleven thousand five hundred and fifty exactly and the pivot low here which is basically eleven thousand three uh, 11,100 we're going to say okay 11,101 dollars uh, so we got this internal range now where you got the low of the range and you got the high of the range and um, obviously if the trend is going to continue with its lower highs and lower lows lower highs lower lows lower highs is it going to go down for the lower low okay that would be the trend continuation or it breaks the trend and does something more like this okay breaks out of its trend and then you've got going to have taken the lower lower high and you put in a higher low and you put in a higher high but then you have to remember you then move back a pivot up to this high that is the pretty big resistance and that actually in all of this is internal to that high at the moment so you've got that big resistance coming in at around, in my opinion 11,900 
and then a big support at 11,000. Obviously, that's a $900 dollar range. It's too big to be trading. This is where you have to zoom in and really get some extra information, more confluences, because $900, yeah, we're in a $900 range, but it's not really tradable. Okay, to get the tradable information, that's where you got to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to zoom into the, let's zoom into the five minute here. And I want to show you something here, which I think was a, a really nice insight. So as you know, uh, as I said at the start, I, I have really not been trading at all, not been looking at the charts, not been doing anything for, for the last two weeks, obviously, um, you know, with, with my dad's death and all that. So with, um, you know, with getting back into the charts, and this is something that I, I, I would think is a, a applicable to everybody that when you take a break from something, it takes a little while to, to you know, to get your cogs rolling, and get your brain thinking again. And, um, you know, I've obviously been back now for, well, really came back yesterday properly. And um, this is something that I was looking at yesterday. And I think this is a great insight into swing trading as well as identifying the big levels. OK, because this is a brilliant insight, to be honest. Um, this is uh, a post from the group yesterday that was taken at um, 14.47, okay, uh, where I was saying that the, the only level that I would look to short is the 11,550-ish, okay? I did actually write 12,550, but obviously that was a mistake, and I meant 11,550. And so this is the thing. Uh, we'll, we'll go to the timestamp in a minute, but this was basically uh, 2.47 that I was writing, not interested in a short from this level, and I only want to short the higher prices because, again, we're going for the most high probability trades. Okay, so we'll go back to the time when this was posted. And as you can see on the timestamp, it was on this candle, okay, between the 45 and the 50 candle. And as you can see, <laughs> five minutes after I posted that, we got the really big move to the upside. This isn't to say, oh, look at me, I, I, I called it right, but it's to say, why? Why was I saying I'm not actually going to short any, you know, that was supposed, that was around, what, we were around 11,300. You obviously got over a $250 move from there. So why was I not interested in shorting any of those sub-levels? Two, two factors. Firstly, for me, the biggest resistance was obviously the 11,550-ish region, as well as the fact I was swing trading. So those two factors together gave me the reasonings for I'm not going to be short in any of these levels. I was in a long at the time and uh, 11,550 was actually my take profit, take profit one. And, um, you know, that is the outcome of this from recognizing that this isn't a good short you had because you did have internal confluences. You had VWAP, you had daily point of controls, you had, uh, you know, your CC level. So there were reasons why people could be drawn into a short. But then you always have to look at is it the most probable? And this is the thing that you obviously this was up off of the back of a quick move down and sometimes they can get people a bit more bearish than needed. Uh, and obviously, you know, from there, that was a good decision. As we moved up, we then got our resistance back into support. And this is the icing on the cake perfection. The high of this candle, as you can see in the top left up here, high of that candle, 11,550. Pretty amazing, no? Pretty amazing. That was what we were waiting for. Eleven thousand five hundred and fifty. I did not take the original short off of this, but as I, I've, what we're doing at the moment is daily live streams uh, for the champions. So I was in a live stream this morning explaining this. That the first one for me, because I was obviously in a long position at the time, so I did not sh go long into a short. Took profits on my long on the first attempt, and then when you get the back test, that's when you open up the opportunities for you know higher leverage positions. Okay, and as you can see here. You kind of get this really, really, really nice fib and actually set up where you actually come down. OK, and then you get the really trace. And this is the shorting opportunities. OK, and you see so you see so you hit entry trigger one, two and three. And then you come down for your take profits. OK, if I just zoom in here, you can see these are like laddered entries. So you get ladder entry one, two, three. Obviously, you don't hit number four, but nevertheless, you get three or four. And then you get the move down, hitting take profit one, hitting take profit two, hitting take profit three. OK, as you can see, these are like to the dollars. And what was really funny this morning is that I I, I uh, am a big uh, advocate of counter trading head and shoulders. And guess what there was? You had this inverse head and shoulders this morning, which people were aware of. And you have to move up and lovely, lovely, lovely fake out from it. So anybody that tries to buy the breakout of this in head and shoulders pattern, guess what? Wrecked. <laughs> uh, sorry, but I, I love it when that happens. But anyway, obviously, that, that's what you have going on here locally. So, um, you know, what I can say is you have a big, you know, really clear. I think that I think that the weeklies here are just so 
big and crucial. 11,531, okay, to 11,550. Then the bigger, you know, you've got that big level up there of 11,926. And then uh, internally, we've got this mini range to trade. I'm not, inter tra I'm not trading the internal mini range. I have one entry trigger from the internal mini range, but um, it's basically, I'm not really interested in trading this from this low to this high. I'm waiting for a break of this next. Okay, and then below this, you have the big daily and then you have the big weekly above you. Okay, so a few things to summarize. Okay, we've got bearish market structure locally. We have the potential though to turn this around if we can claim that weekly. And then obviously you've got that next higher weekly pivot above you. Um, the way I'm trading this is swing trades only. That means I'm not really scope trading any of this. Like I didn't actually counter that head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders this morning. because I'm not interested in trading this um, locally here. Okay, so that's kind of my updates. Um, final words. Yes, I have uh, not been really trading for the last, what, three, two, three weeks. Uh, but I feel I've taken some time emotionally and feel ready and, um, you know, fill fill up again for this. So um, I want to say thank you for all of the comments of support that you all gave me, you know, thoroughly always appreciate I, I love you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed this analysis of uh, primarily uh, talking you through this, this of, of why, of really recognizing where's the best levels to take trades. Okay. Where are those best levels? And it's then ignoring the noise in the middle. And once you get those high probability trades, you take them okay so it's like recognizing those levels acting on the levels and you know really is quite quite simply perfection of the way that they, they bounce off of those levels really 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 nice um and then you know i've taught you through then internally uh, the two next major levels that i'm looking at which is really that weekly to the daily uh you could easily put in a range between these i'm only going to be trading the next break of this um and uh, yeah, just so you're aware, I am now back and I'm going to be trading. I uh, will start scope trading again on Monday. But yeah, obviously now for the champions live streams, for the contenders live streams, for the, you know, the daily updates that we're doing at the moment, uh, all that good stuff. I am now back around. Um, and I must admit, it does feel good to be back. Um, it does take my mind off of things. And, you know, when I've got the charts in front of me, you know, I guess I, I will try and block out everything and, you know, but I am feeling good and I appreciate all the support and, and time that you've, you know, you've, you appreciate that I've taken away. So, um, yeah, thank you, everybody. Hope that you've enjoyed this video and um, have a brilliant day ahead. Cheers. Bye.